Easy E, how are we? Sean E, I used to get the fear when these Zoomy ones, when you want to go recording in progress, when they introduced that, it was kind of like added to the, oh no, anything I'd be saying is going to be used <laughs> in evidence. <laughs> the, the red light is on, it's, it's live, you got to go. Like, um, I, I think people know this already, but we kind of treat these podcasts as if they're, as if they're live. Like there's not, there's very, very little editing done throughout the, the podcast. It's just, this is live. This is what we say. This is what our mind we have basic topic of mind and we, we just we just go with it from there. Um, speaking of basic topic of mind, the only thing that's been on my mind in terms of running, and I've got a lot of events coming up. I've got the 80K Eco Trail, which I'm goose for. I've got two marathons coming up, but the only thing on my mind is a sub 25K. And I feel like we've talked about this a lot this year alone, let alone over the last two years. So if anyone follows us on Instagram at any given training day, they probably know what happened to me. I did the 5K a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I only, you know what? It, it, it still annoys me. I was supposed to just one last time and done. So my whole entire marathon training was to do this in in June because Rachel had told us a couple months ago on the podcast, like here at the one in Kukok in June, go for it then, see what happens. I'm like, if I get, I get. It. If I don't, I don't. And then I move on to a 10k in July, which ended up being another 5k attempt, and then keep building up and have my own kind of race series leading up to the to the marathons I'm doing. So when I didn't get it in June, I was very disappointed in how I ran it because I, I took off too fast, which also seems like something we're constantly talking about in this podcast. I said, I got to readjust, set myself a game plan, and I go a little bit faster at the start because most, I even, I read books and all on this now. Like most 5Ks or most um, PBs in, in this kind of distance is you start off a little fast, you settle in for the couple, and you always have that little bit of tank to push that little bit more at the end. So that was the game plan. Took off, had my 340, I think it was 348, 350 start. And I was like, grand, I'm settling into the run now. I'll settle into 4K, uh, four minute kilometers for the next three, and then try and push towards the end. And I did exactly that. If you look at my Garmin, I got four minute kilometer pace um, <coughs> over 5K. So technically, that should mean I got under the sub 20, but I didn't. I want to talk about that more. <laughs> After the intro music, <laughs> let's go. Okay, so the caveat to that is I knew where the last kilometer, I, I knew I was close, but with like 20, 30 seconds to go, I, I 250 meters to go, and I was like a little under a minute to do it on the watch. I'm like, I don't think I could do it. I took the second last turn and I seen how far it was away, and I seen the time like 10, 15 seconds left. I'm like, even if I was fresh and an all-out sprint, I couldn't do it. So long story short, in that part, I finished the 5K in 2022 race time. And as soon as I finished, as always, just collapsed in the ground, felt like in a heap, felt like I was puking. And like, here's the thing, the last half a kilometer, like I'm starting to pass people out, but I'm breathing a lot heavier than they are. Like I'm, I'm openly like, I, <sighs> like that kind of just everything that's left in the tank is just emptying and then completely collapsed at the end. I'd say around five minutes later, I looked at the watch and the watch is like four minute kilometer pace. I'm like, it can't be. I did 2022, 20, like doesn't add up. And then I came 5K, new personal record, 2003. And I was just, if I had energy, I would have thrown the phone across the road. I was like, I am done. <laughs> Now, before we get into it more, would, if, if I'd gotten three, four seconds shorter, now I know my answer to this, would you have taken that as a sub-20? Because if you had done a race, had you done a run yourself and your watch told you sub-20, even though it's it, it, it's not an official race time, do you count it as that's a sub-20? Or would you like, I need to be good five, 10 seconds only to be sub-20? Mm -hmm. Or do you count that as a PB? Or does it have to be under race conditions? Uh, well, the only sub 25k I have done is on my own. Um, but the, the only consistency I kept was it was the same route. So yeah, um, it was clear progress for me. Like it wasn't a case of, oh, I'm going to break a 5k. So I started at the top of the mountain and just <laughs> rolled down. I, you. You know, I, I kept the same start point and the same finish point to within a couple of steps was the same finish point every time on the watch. It would always be there, there about the ballpark. So, um, like most races, like those who, who go out and do a couple of races, you'll see that your 21K in, or your half marathon ends up being 21.5. And, you know, yeah. because a finish line 
is close to where it should be, but the kind of position of for crowd control and ease and everything else, they'll add on another minute or two here. And you're also um, going wide and stuff as well, especially like the Dublin Martin, for example. Like you're not taking yeah. those corners the way you want to take those corners. You're going well out wide, especially the start. So it, yeah. it would add on. And for me, it's added on a good two, three minutes. But then again, is the GPS accurate? Yeah, well, the GPS, I suppose, is uh, I always tell people run. If, if you buy a watch, go down to a 400 meter track and run a lap. And if right. you cross the start line again and it's 3.9 thing into the 400, then you can kind of, you have at some point, you have to take a little bit of faith. The only part where it gets a bit hairy is if you're going in through forests and stuff, it, the GPS yeah. is accurate. But if you're just out on the roads and you have a good GPX or GPS um, connection, then you, it should be moderately okay. It should be if 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 you your watch isn't broken, I suppose. But you know, if you're if you're doing intervals on Wednesday and you're doing four hundred intervals on the track, and every time you cross the line of beans, when you go do your five k, you can be pretty sure it's there thereabouts five k. You know, I, to your point in that as well, I suppose you've done a so twenty on your own, which to me is infinitely harder than doing it in a race condition because you're not pushed by other people. Um, maybe you get more in your. I get more on my own head, which talking in a second. But like because you're by yourself, you don't have that like the extra nerves, the extra butterflies. Maybe you did. Maybe I'm wrong on that. But compared to a race, did you did, was it hard to keep on pushing and going? Whereas like you, you're you're easier when you push yourself towards that limit. It is easier to stop when you're by yourself than when someone else is 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 pushing beside you or behind you or you're trying to catch someone and the minds change different things. Whereas you're by yourself, it's like if I stop, no one knows I'm here. It's just me and whatever my watch says. And I can easily just hit the scar and that and no one knows. Or I just say I wasn't actually going for it, I was just going for a run. I happened to get that time. You can talk yourself out of it. And, and, and that's what I want to get into this podcast that the mind plays such a big part in this. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> Everyone's like, like, yes, I can say I did my sub 25k, but I failed six times before I got it. Like, I actually stopped and started getting sick in the ditch, and my <laughs> diaphragm was it. You know, like, yeah, it's grand to say I did it, but I equally had those days where I actually hit that. Like, it's a weird thing in my head 2.7k. Once I got to there, mm. it was like, I'm not gonna make it, I am going to die. And like every time it was just the body was fine and fine, pace was fine, pace was fine through that. And I was like, I have this, I have this. And then within 300 meters, it was like, you're going to die, you're going to die, you're going to die, you're going to stop. You're gonna... <laughs> like it's, and, and it was just one of these days I just got aggressive. And I think that's what got me there that day. I got aggressive with it. Yeah. I actually got angry. And that gave me that little bit of a burst. Now, when I did it, I, I can't remember, 1950, 1945, whatever it was, it was, to be honest, that's how much little I cared. I just seen it was less than 20 and that was it. You're happy. <laughs> I yeah. fell on the ground, couldn't breathe. It was like I'd fallen on my back. The, my diaphragm had spasmed, couldn't breathe. I was in an absolute jocker. And I, I remember saying it to you that day, I was like, never again. Yeah, I remember that Never call. again am I doing this. It's not worth it. I didn't enjoy any of the training for it. I didn't enjoy any of the attempts. And to be honest, I didn't even enjoy the satisfaction of saying I did it. No? To be completely honest. No, it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth the pain I went through. Um, I've had much better days when I can meet someone that evening and they were like, "What to do today?" I was like, oh, "I ran twenty five k in Phoenix Park." Yeah, and there I am, kick it. Beer. Yeah, and then I'm eating fish and chips covered in garlic cheese chips and everything. And it's like, "Why are you doing that?" Well, I burned five thousand calories today because I ran and so You know, like it's yeah. it's it's just for me. There's more of a life balance with the long distance, and I appreciate yeah. look. I appreciate those who. Um, do it like Rachel. Rachel is phenomenal, but Rachel, Rachel's realm is five to ten k, and has been doing it since she's younger. Um, for me, I was a goalkeeper playing soccer ball all the years. Like <laughs> ten yards was my realm of sprinting and fast running, and that was about it. Like it's you know, like I can appreciate people with engines who played in midfield and stuff can still churn out a five k in eighteen minutes and stuff. But I, I, I'm not saying you can't do it when you're older. But teaching the body to do it is a hell of a lot harder. And there's a lot more pain threshold to go through when you're 29, 30, trying to do it. Um, it's a mental thing. It's, yeah, yeah, definitely mental. Like we've talked yeah. before, goggles with the, the, the governor and your, 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 your mind trying to pull back. And I believe that's what happens to you at 2.7. It's your brain trying to protect you and going, 
you're going to uncharted territory at this level. You need to stop. You need to pull back. You need to to have it that that small bit more in the tank. And that's what he means when he's like, uh, when you're at forty percent, you can still keep on going. People argue of, oh well, it's not forty percent, fifty percent. Like the numbers don't matter. It's like your brain tells you you've got a certain point uh, uh, to pull back from there. And because to your point, when you're younger and stuff, we haven't done much five Ks and ten Ks where Rachel will always do that. Her brain goes so she's done that so many times that now it's just a case of, okay, I actually can push a bit further and be safer. Like there was this study done and they had three three separate groups of people, six, eight people, whatever it was, and they had their their biceps, their arms were, were, were hooked up so they could see the amount of contraction on each rep doing bicep curls. So they were one group was told you go for six reps, but on six reps, you go all out as much contraction in that curl on each and every rep as if it's your last rep. But they were told, You've got six reps to do. One group was told, same thing, except you've got 12 reps to do. And the other group, uncontrolled group, was like, you just keep going till we tell you to stop. So they were told flat out on each one, and that's it. But what happened with the group of six, when it got to the sixth rep, the sixth rep had a little bit more contraction in the first five, even though they're going flat out. With a group of 12, they were actually had slower contractions than the group of six, even though they're the same kind of person. But when they got to 12, so the, the brain was automatically keeping something in reserve, even though they were told and they were trying to go flat out on each and every muscle contraction, each and every rep, the brain took over and went, no, you need to pull back a little bit. It's like the same with our pacing. If you went out for a 20K run, you will naturally pace yourself for that compared to a 2K run. If you're like told all out 2K or all out 20, there's a different pace in the start without you even thinking about it. You're you're gearing yourself up. And I think that comes into so much more with a 5K when you, it, we've always said in this podcast, it feels like an all out sprint to us because we're constantly all out and our brain trying to judge that and being like at that halfway mark being, you, you've had enough, you better pull back or something's going to happen. You're going to feel like getting sick and all the rest. And it's, Breaking through that mental barrier is a, it's a phenomenal way of thinking of it that I have not quite cracked yet. Yeah, and it is, it is hard. And it's like, we, we found it through our training, not that we were experts at endurance stuff, but mm. the, the, the Mongo fitness, we call it, was just the ability to keep going. But yeah. we never really sprinted anywhere. It was just, oh, what's over this next ridge or what's over you don't know what you were getting into so in a way we're kind of i definitely my self-protection was always keep a bit in the tank because when you get to what you're told is the finish line it's never the finish line and um, which hasn't really helped me when i'm doing circuit classes with people and they're like all out all out all out and i'm like no <laughs> no <laughs> what's next after this i need to reserve yeah. a bit i think that's, that's what the next with so, the longer distances it's always a case of um, I will finish this. I yeah. want to make sure I finish this. Whereas a 5K, the, the question of will I, will I not finish this doesn't come into it. It's it's how fast can I get to that finish line? Like I know they're both a race, but it's two completely different mindsets. Uh, and I enjoyed it, the half marathon, full marathon and, and, and the rest that little bit more because it's like, I will finish this. Can I maintain a certain pace without feeling like all out sick? Like, like I can do a 420 over... Um, 420 over 21k, but I can hold slightly under a four for over 5k. It's mental comes into it. Has to absolutely be mental. mental. But this is another thing in the terms of um maybe I'm wrong, not a scientist, but a theory I have is I found with my longer distances, I'd be very uncomfortable until six kilometers. And then 420s, 410s, easy money. Um, but it's it's that first bit where the body is adjusted I, I really don't settle into races long distance until six kilometers mm-hmm. in and then it's then it just seems like i can go all day but there is that little bit of disturbance at the start whereas if i was training on the shorter distance intervals strides a 7k run interval strides 7k 8k run i would feel very comfortable after 2k 400 meters maybe you know like depending on, on what way yeah. i can set myself up but um I know there's probably more experienced runners out there that have been involved in athletics club. I suppose the way I'm doing it, you're doing a lot more reading than me, but the way I'm doing it is just listening to the body. But I, I, I do find that. I do find when I start running in the park for the first 6K, I'm like, oh, mother of God. But then after that, it's like, what will I do? 30, 20? You know, like it's... Yeah, the second wind kicks in pretty much. Yeah, the second wind. And, and, I, and it's one thing with the sub 5K I did. The only thing I did different on the day 
was I ran to the start point, which was 1K. Right. And I, I got a little stretch in and I'd kind of given the body the, we're about to do something crazy here. But the other times I was like, conserve the energy, conserve the energy. I probably set myself up on this mental block. So when I went straight at it, it was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, your, your brain is like, okay, he, he's not stopping. We just got to keep going yeah. now. And that's when that... That, that distance in your mind changes, which is probably a good approach. Just go like that one kilometer warm up and be like, okay, pushing. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm going to do this today. And even that, even yeah. that telling yourself that, which sounds childish, just, you know, yeah. self-talk, believe, achieve and all that kind of crack. But there is a certain truth to it. I am. Um, and it, it happened to me in Alabama. I, I've never done a 40 minute 10K. Um, but I went out for a run one night and I started off at, Ah, we'll just go out for a run. And that was the intention. And it was at a five minute pace. And then kind of coming down the hill, came down to 4.30. I was like, oh, I'm feeling good. And kind of held 4.30 for the first 2K. And then I was like, you know what? Let's see what we can do. And after the 2K, I dropped it down to a 4.06 average for the remaining um, eight kilometers and to 4.03 for the last one. I was like, holy shit. I was really close to doing a 40 minute 10K. So it was the quickest ever 10K I've done. Um, but the the point being, I settled into it at a, a much slower pace and then mm. upped it. And I probably could have gone down to the 350 for 2K at the end if I wanted to balance the start. But for me, it's definitely the starting. It's definitely the pace of the start that dictates what the body's going to do for the rest of it. And that was just on a, there's nothing to win or lose here. I'm going for a run. And then halfway through, I decided, no, two kilometers in, a fifth of the way through, I decided, let's see how fast we can do a 10K. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like it's, so here's my thought process. Because at the 10K, I was like, I had 11 and 12 in me there. Should I go for a 2K run before I start my 10K best attempt? You know, that's that's what I was thinking. And I do see a lot of people, even before the marathon, they're going for a run. They're, they're running to the start line. They're before 10Ks, they're all doing warm-up lengths up and down, up and down. I'm like me strolling up and just taking on keeping me top on to stay warm and doing the odd hip flex and wheelie of the hips and whatever yeah. else. <laughs> and, uh, like i know the answer i just still can't bring myself to run two kilometers before i do the actual race but um there's definitely a lot to be said for it, like building up to the pace and then when you get to the start line you're ready for that pace you there's, there's no shock to the body yeah the heart rate's up and that will be the approach i'll take to a couple of my attempts at 10Ks and quicker as we get towards the end of October just to see what's there, what's there for a 5K. But my 5K attempt is going to happen after I've ran 5K, you know, and, and got to that comfortable level where I can adjust pace. Um, yeah. And that's that's one thing. And I have definitely done faster 5Ks in 12K runs than I have done that day I tried a sub-20 attempt. Um, because... I've just in the middle of the run decided we're going to go hard like a fart neck and I drop it down to a 3.55. Yeah. But because the watch has already started, uh, it won't count as your quickest 5K because it it wasn't, or, you know, it, 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 whatever way the watch is calculating. But even though I know I've ran That's faster right. than I've ran a 19.30. So it's, and that was during a 12K. So it's it's a bit funny in that sense. It, I, I don't know, do other people have it? It's a, a bit mad. Um or are we just, am I just mentally weak from the start point? I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really hard. It's hard to, hard to gauge. Mm. Yeah. I've, I've, I've no answer. I just had a lot of thoughts to that, but that one more so than actually anything to contribute, except man, I gotta get the sub 20. It's annoying me. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's annoying um, but this me is, so much. This is the genuine truth. I reckon if you went on a 3K easy 5.30, progressing to a 4.30 into the 4.10 and then arrived mm. at the start line for a stretch and then you were going to go again, I reckon you'd probably have a better chance of feeling more comfortable or confident one or the other. You know, whether it's like, okay, it would be equivalent of an AK, but as you said, you'll run a 4.20, 21K. You know, like it's mentally, yeah, it's nothing so I to should you. Be tired. Yeah, but if yeah. you build up your, I suppose, the mentality of, Listen, sure, I've only done three of five to go. We're well warmed up. I had that pace there for the last 100 meters. This will be all right. I, I, So like as in finishing at that four-minute kilometer, you could probably start at it then. You're like, no, I started the four-minute, 
see how we go through the next 2K and then I'll drop the pace because I know everyone's saying like start fast, settle, finish fast. Um, but when you're training mostly, and this is just a theory, I could be mm-hmm. told to go fuck myself, but when you're training the distances you're training, maybe just ease in too fast, do the race, and then when the race is finished, cool down with another 3K. You know, like it's... <laughs> yeah, I was talking to someone yesterday about this and they were like, when they do go for a 5K and, and she's also sub 20 now, She's like, she treats it as if it's a 6K run. So she gets a good warm-up in, and then it's just mentally she has to treat it as if she has to go further. So she finds a way to, to get longer. And it, it, it's just another mental strategy that makes it, uh, that, that makes that distance um, get, get your head around cheaper, doing that yeah. 5K distance, keep, keep yeah. going that, that long. And so whatever you think can get you, keep pushing. Because it's definitely... Like I was constantly in my own head, uh, apart from like a 30 second gap where there was like kids jumping by the canal. Like what the hell? Apart from that part, um, everyone was like, I, every time I was looking to watch, trying to do the maths on it, trying to think. And and that's draining in itself. Like um, I know I've been showing studies. So there's this book I'm reading at the moment called Endure. It's, like a, it's just tons of studies and how far you can push yourself mentally and physically. But one more of them. Um, so we had two groups of people to do a bike, as many watts as output as they could do over an hour. Before them, and 90 minutes before them, one of them had to read like a documentary on on like Ferrari or just some like mind-numbing documentary where it was just like, you don't have to think, you're just watching it and, that, and that's what it is, what it is. And the other one, they had to like crossword puzzles and all these games and figure things out and stuff like that. And they're all of equal fitness. And they found that the, the, the people that just watched the random documentary, because they weren't as fried mentally, uh, could last like 10, 15% longer uh, and had more output of 10, 15% over an hour than the people that actually had to think. So... I think I'm in my head a lot and I'm, I need to keep this pace. I need to keep this pace. Drops to 4.05. Oh, sugar. I need to try and get back up to the four. Oh, it's 3.55. I'm going too fast. Slow down a small bit. And then, and obviously that's not exactly accurate itself yeah. because it's constantly changing as you're running and the terrain's changing. You're going slightly uphill, slightly downhill. Got to make a, a, a 180 turn. And all of a sudden it drops to a 4.30. I'm like, oh, 4.30, relax. I said, what, what am I doing? And then like, I go uphill near the end and, and you're like, oh, now I'm down to a 4.20. I have no hope of doing it. And then it pops to 3.45. Oh, do I have it? Do I not have it? Rather than thinking, just cover the watch and go. You know? Yeah, I suppose like the only the only important. So when you start off, I suppose just settle. Don't look at the watch. Mm. You can gauge five hundred meters. You know, you can see right. Let's just see what get involved with the crowd. Look down. Holy fuck, three thirty. But that's all right. Feeling good. You know, like it's yeah. It's definitely that. And then you you only have to look down five more times, and that's every time the watch beeps. And then just make a quick assessment. So there's 1K, four minutes. Okay, that's comfortable. Now every hill that you come to, an uphill, you need to be thinking, okay, let's shorten the stride, but quicken the, the, the cadence on this one. Let's keep the pace going up the hill. And then when you see the downhills, like we were two seconds short in the last one. So let's try and use the hill to get down. And, and then all you have to do is kind of, then you're focusing on the road as opposed to the, the pain. Um, I mm. suppose you're, each, each thing is an obstacle. Um, and that's, that's just another little mental trick I suppose and then the next time it beeps you'll see either 8 minutes 5 or you'll see 7.56 and you make you make your next assessment it's like that plan yeah. works the plan you know so now you're thinking uh, 5 times instead of 5 times every minute yeah and that, it, that's a huge game changer just keep you go like start saying what you see what you smell what you hear uh, you know like hmm. take in the experience of it just to distract the other senses you know what colors are people wearing you know like just to be involved in what you're doing um, as best you can I suppose yeah but it is a tough one it is definitely well, a tough one to put a bow in this episode when I go for it again I'm not mentioning it until after I do it and I know I always <laughs> talk about make yourself accountable and go for it but when I go for it again I'm, I'm not even going to mention sub 25k in this podcast until I can finally say I've done a sub 25k and have proof of it. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna happen somewhere in October when me and you are going for a run. <laughs> it just burst to be out of it. We're gonna just well, say stop stop for a stretch here for a second. You're like, yeah, no butter. And then I'll say, does your watch reset? Yeah, okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> <We're gone. laughs> um I, I will I'll hold myself accountable because um I, I was an idiot after I went out for a 10 mile run. 
And like halfway through, I'm like, I just got tick. Instead of doing like a 5.15 easy pace, I started doing 4.40, 4.30. I just get annoyed myself. I did the exact same thing on the Friday. And then I went for hills on Sunday. And um, I got through the hills. I'm like, no, I've do these hills again because I'm, this eco trail is coming up September. So I got to get used to these hills. Uh, long story short, fell ground the next day. On Tuesday, boat Achilles are in bits. So I'm on the bike for the next two weeks. So uh, both of them are just shot. I tried to run on Friday. I got a clamor in. And I'm like, I, I, this is, this is painful. So yeah, this, uh, this 5k is going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. So if, uh, it is, it really is. It, it's messed me up. I knew it would, but it's messed me up completely now, but I've got 12 weeks of Dublin. So I'm starting a new uh, strength training program on Monday. I'm going to be on the bike now for the next two, next week and a half. So I'm going to London next weekend. So I probably won't get too much training there. So there's no point in trying to do a bit of running back off the running. So on the bike, try to keep that aerobic capacity, that 60-70% on the bike uh, as much as I can, build up the endurance there, and then keep the strength training going. Hopefully, near the end of the month, pick back up the running and, and, and see how it goes then towards Dublin, sub-330 still the goal. Which I know is in me. Yeah, I know it's in me because I've got, the, I've got the 132 half. If I can get back that fitness and I'm not too far off it, I think sub-330 Dublin is, is the goal, providing... I stay injury free. Yeah, and that's that's the key thing. And uh, well, that's what the one good thing about the bike. And I suppose it's something me and you have learned. But definitely from more experienced guys who told me, um, cycling will replace running. It'll substitute running, uh, but running will not substitute cycling. So those who are doing triathlons, they're like, I've done loads of running. Uh, when you get on the bike and you take on a few hills, and all of a sudden your lower back is sore and everything is sore. It's it's, yeah, it's not nice, but um. No. But definitely in terms of endurance, um, it's it's definitely can substitute it because the legs are still and there's less impact. You know, like it's I'm finding it now. I, I've stuck to the cycling and we'd be introducing five k's. So it was supposed to be this week, but with the way work went, uh, I actually just lent them the cycles for that same reason. It will substitute like I cycling for two hours a day essentially now. So like nice at work. a heart rate of one forty. You know, so it's it's two hours at one forty, which is which is where I want to be when I, it comes to long distance running. So, um, you know, obviously, it is harder to run. Uh, you use more parts. The heart rate will try and rise, but there's a great foundation with the cycling. You know, it, yeah. it is keeping it there. Um, so yeah, those who are carrying injuries, but you're still able to be mobile, definitely think about getting on the bike and and putting in the hour or two on the bike as well. Especially if you're in marathon training, um. You will pick up niggles. It, it's a it's gonna happen. Niggles, and just have that in your head. It was like carrying a niggle. Cool, we're on the bike for two days, and and use it the same as you would if you're doing intervals. You know, find a place that you know you're going fast down this side of the road. You're going slow back up the road. You know, like it's it sprints on the bike. You know, you can you can still work the heart, and that is the most important part of it. And then you can when you're when you're fit and able to get back onto the like yourself in two weeks' time, hopefully back onto the roads again. And and then you might keep some cycling as well. You might swap out an easy run and just keep it at a long cycle just to give the body a little bit of a break. Hopefully, hopefully. And that note, anything else to add to this week's episode of the Any Give Run Day podcast? No, but that's it. That's it, and that's it for myself and Eric, the two of us. Take care. Bye.